with, with apologies either to Ang Lee or Elizabeth Gilbert, I'm going to talk about eat, play, and create. So before I start, I can't see you, but how many of you have been to Governor's Island? Is that, OK. How many of you have no idea what I'm talking about? OK. I have a couple of people. So we'll do a couple of facts. 172-acre island in the middle of New York Harbor, accessible only by boat, entirely closed to the public as a military base for its entire history, open to the public about a year before I got there. Uh, if you haven't been recently, we've built a new park, so this is the latest aerial. The only thing you really have to remember, it's shaped like an ice cream cone. So if you remember that, that'll bring you back when we open in the summer. So uh, that's the most important thing. Governor's Island has actually, um, as Jim alluded to, become an incredibly inviting place for theater and performance. Uh, we had hundreds of Dutch people camping on the island, creating the New Island Festival. If you missed a 12-hour play about torture presented by the Lincoln Center Festival in 2010, or a two-island, two-castle, uh, for those of you Shakespeareans, Henry V. And uh, just uh, last year, we had about 10 different presentations, both theater and dance, Third Rail, uh, the Here Art Company, Fist and Heel. Um, but I'm actually not going to talk to you about theater at all, uh, even though we're here on Broadway. Talk about open house, hammocks, and the knish, both as a food item and, more importantly, as a metaphor. Um, <laughs> so New York City is the cultural capital of the world, right? We're here on Broadway. We can walk in any direction. When I started in 2006, we asked the question, what does New York City not have? And if I'd asked that question on the stage back then, you would have laughed at me, right? Because New York City had, has everything. Um, New York City didn't have a flexible free space for public programming. Um, this is actually a representation of the Contiki raft. And I will tell you in 2006, it felt a little bit like that out there. We were kind of alone floating in the harbor saying, come on, come. We're going to be totally open. We're going to encourage it, and you will come. We're not going to build anything, no, more, no big museums, no big new theaters. What happens if we're completely open? So we adopted an approach that we like to call the spaghetti strategy. And sometimes I actually bring a box of spaghetti with me, um, but I'm in this sort of a gluten-free moment. Um, <laughs> and what we mean by that is throw your ideas against the wall, and we are completely open to them. Um, and when we started, we had to throw the ideas. Now you come and throw ideas at us. So for example, my email this morning, I had the transgressive placemakers who like to break into buildings. I said, bring it on. Last week, I had the artist who wants to float a couch outside our seawall. What do we do? We say yes, because we are friendly bureaucrats. <laughs> that is the, if you start every conversation with yes, it is amazing where you can go. And that is our philosophy. We'll see. I can't guarantee the couch will be floating in the harbor. I have to talk to a lot of permitting agencies. But what we don't do is we don't give you any money. So if you want to set up a mini golf course designed by artists, yes, pay for it. If you want to have a giant festival with cows, yes, we did have a cow as the icon of our theater festival, and 200 Dutch people camping, yes, but you pay for it. And the other thing we don't do is we don't curate. And I mean the old sense of the word, right? This is actually for anyone who majored in art history. This is a picture of Bernard Berenson. So not the like hip internet, you know, we're all curators. But I have no idea what is going to be on Governor's Island this summer. And I'm going to find out on Memorial Day weekend just when you do, because I don't get involved in the content at all. Anything you want to do, we give you free space. We have 150,000 square feet of space, as is space, don't get too excited. Uh, in former officers' homes and 25 acres of green space that we give you free of charge as long as you create something that's free and open to the public. And what's happened, it's not space is wonderful in New York. We're all very space challenged. But more importantly, the islands become this magnet, this magnet for people to come to have new kinds of experiences. We work the media. Um, you can create incredible imagery for your projects. And of course, with social media, the old world where, you know, what's your advertising budget for the New York Times? That world's over. Um, and because of that, that means anybody can create something and we give you a citywide platform and an audience. And so if you'd been on Governor's Island on June 21st, you could have gone to 12 exhibits. I have to check because every day is different. Um, a porch stomp, bluegrass festival on our porches, a dance performance in a grove of trees, bicycles, food trucks, um, take a nap. 
whatever you, we consider composting part of culture. We take that very seriously. This is what you could do. There is no other place really in the country, if not the world, where you can have this incredible range of cultural experiences in the midst of a beautiful green space. And this gives you an idea when I say your own identity, I'd love you to tell me which project that created these posters had a million dollar budget and which one had a $400 budget. You don't know, the public doesn't know, and we don't care. And then this gives you an idea of what it's like to be on the island. And again, if you can tell me who their performers are and who the audience is, you're going to get extra points at the end of my presentation. Um, uh, uh, quiz, uh, Curious Invasion, those are the only performers in these pictures. Over the last few years, an enormous growth in the number of organizations. Last summer, over 60 different groups created experiences uh, on the island. And the kinds of experiences has grown. Open studios, rehearsals, theater and dance, all kinds of exhibits. We have a very broad definition of culture, so we count everything as part of culture. And as a result of that, Governor's Island has become a way more popular place. About half a million people came last summer. We hope more of you come this coming summer to have this unique experience. And the lesson we've learned is what happens when you are truly open, truly open to any kind of cultural experience and watch how people come and how they help create that with you. Um, people come and it's really important to us to listen to you. Um, what do you want in this place? This is a public space, you pay for it. Um, I work for the mayor. And so we ask you a lot. And we collected lots of post-it notes uh, going back as early as 2007. We do it every year. We found that if you allow grown-ups to be creative, they create these little haikus with rubber stamps. But then really importantly, we don't just put those in a uh, drawer, right? People are very cynical that, remember, I'm a friendly bureaucrat, that we actually do anything with uh, public feedback. You, you heard I Quant New York as a great example, those wonderful emails back from the MTA. My God, you know, thank you very much. Uh, we don't do that. We put it in a word cloud. So we didn't actually provide free love um, to everyone, but ice cream was very easy. This was our first word cloud. Um, I did actually hear a story that'll be during the break about a sort of free love moment that was not sanctioned, but um, <laughs> it was like a dilemma. What do you, I was asked this question, what would you do if you found two people making love in the you know, moat of the fort? Because, and I said, I don't really know. I mean, I've had sort of, you know, anyway, we'll go on. We'll come back to that. Um, true story. Um, We've also found that observing is just as crucial as listening. And observing is not stalking you, but your producers, do you really look at your audience, what they do, what they want, not just that the women's line is longer than the men's line in every theater in New York, but what are people doing? But the most important thing that we do, and we do this every day, this is our normal mode of being, is we experiment and we improvise. So, about seven years ago, a visitor had an idea. She was on a cold day coming to Governor's Island, and she said, wouldn't it be great if this was the island of a thousand hammocks? And I was just kind of mesmerized. It was cold like today. The visitor happened to be Myra Kalman, the amazing illustrator, so she drew this picture for me long after the fact. But I just said, that's kind of brilliant. So I went shopping, went online, punched in hammocks, bought 20 of these that cost about $300 each, and then I did something more. I blew up some buildings. Um, <laughs> Well, I needed some space for the hammocks. So we, we opened this back in 2009. Shopping wasn't enough. I like to shop. We, uh, so we opened up Picnic Point, this incredible space right across from the Statue of Liberty. And we found that people do all kinds of things with hammocks. They have birthday parties in them. They roll them over. Um, they love them. And then we began designing a park. And we had this beautiful botanic grove, and we said, Duh, let's call it Hammock Grove. Um, and this uh, we released in 2010 as part of our master plan. And if you were out on Governor's Island last summer, we have 50 hammocks created, suggested by a visitor. We improvised, we designed them and built them. So please uh, come and stay in those hammocks. But I'm going to end and talk about knishes, a literal knish, <laughs> and then the knishes metaphor. So everyone in my line of work talks about engagement, community engagement, audience engagement. OK, if you do not have a ring on your finger, a new ring, you are not allowed to use that word in my presence. <laughs> because I have never met a real human who uses that word. Only professionals who you hire with consulting contracts. <laughs> so, we don't talk about engagement. We do knishes. 
Uh, does everyone here, please, I hope, knows what a knish is? Anyone not know what a knish is? Okay, hockey puck-like, Jewish, okay, got it. So 75% of our visitors live in New York City. If you're a tourist, you're welcome to come, but we want New Yorkers there. We do a lot. We go out into lots of communities saying, please come to this island, it's yours. And then when you're there, we want you to feel welcome. So I can give you a whole list of things we do or what you could do in the theater to make me feel more welcome, but that's another presentation. <laughs> but everyone knows Maslow's hierarchy of needs. What is at the base? Food. And if you're on an island in the middle of the harbor, remember the Contiki raft? Food is very, very important. You're there for three or four hours. Um, so food is welcoming. It's comforting and familiar. It's got to be varying taste points and price points. It's got to be flavorful, and it's got to also be familiar. Dirty water hot dogs are very cheap and very familiar. We've got lots of them. But most importantly, it has to be for everyone. And so I mentioned we, be, we opened up the island I began in 2006. And in a couple of years, we began to notice that we had huge numbers of Hasidic families and Orthodox coming to Governor's Island. And they, we didn't have food for them. We did not have kosher food. And I called everyone I knew who was observant. Please, I would stop. I mean, literally, I would stalk falafel trucks. Are you, you know, are you got kosher? Could you come to an island? And <laughs> so I ended up with hot nosh. The knishes were kosher, but so was the machine. It didn't work on Shabbat. I kid you not. The machine did not operate. And so I had something. So if, this is a true story. This book, this picture, is from the, the history of the Kanish by Laura Silver. Thank you very much. Um, you can buy it at your local bookstore. Um, but to me, that was necessary but not sufficient. So we actually went out into Borough Park and spoke to a member of the city council, and he issued a press release and said, please, come. Come to Governor's Island. So now, if you come on Sundays, we have schnitzies. Schnitzies is from kosher. Um, and uh, we are truly welcoming. So if I have a lesson or multiple lessons for you and what I've learned from working on an island in the middle of the harbor for several years, it's be truly open, improvise, be radically welcoming, but most importantly, find your knish. Thank you.